video will be recorded. Um, so just a heads up uh, on that. Uh, and today I'm talking about GitHub Classroom. It's a tool that I've been using for my courses that's sort of made things logistically uh, a little bit easier. Um, I'll talk about why. Uh, so yeah, just a note, we're recording uh, the audio. Uh, and what I'm sort of talking about in one slide is how to use you know, some online source control system uh, that's going to help assist students with completing assignments uh, and submitting things for your course. Okay, so that online control system is uh, Git, um, and GitHub is sort of the host, okay, github.com. Uh, so I'm assuming folks are pretty familiar with uh, Git, so just kind of uh, running through uh, in a minute. You know, it's a version control system. You know, some folks uh, within the department are using SVN and these types of things. Uh, Git is, you know, sort of the latest and greatest one. Uh, it's decentralized, so folks um, sort of work on a local copy on their machine, or if you have multiple folks working on a team, they work locally and then they commit to uh, one sort of online repository. Uh, this is one of the tutorials. Um, you know, if you're going to give students sort of a 30-minute uh, how does Git work, uh, this YouTube one's pretty good. Um, so this is something you know they can learn in 30 minutes or less. Uh, and here's sort of the picture uh, of how Git works. Um, again, sort of the idea of this decentralized uh, system. And sort of step one is there's the online repository everyone sees. Students check out this working directory over here. They're working on their local machine. And then step three, they sort of apply their changes. And everything's in this uh, repository. All right, so that's uh, Git in sort of a minute uh, for an overview. Uh, and for folks coming in, just a note that I'm recording the audio live, just so I can send it to uh, Seattle and uh, Silicon Valley. Okay, so you know what is uh, you know you know when students get the basic idea here, uh, they really like using this uh, tool in their classes. Um, you know, pretty much every semester I've gotten feedback something along the lines of I enjoyed learning Git and it feels like it was very helpful real world skill uh, in addition to the course material presented. Uh, yeah, question. I have a question. Just in general, do you typically do this like? In an intro course, students who have a program before at all, or would you expect them to have some experience and then just get it from their own? Yeah, so uh, the first, or I guess the earliest students I'm seeing are sophomores and stuff in systems. Um, so they have gone through fundies, they have gone through some programming course. It's actually sort of a nice fit for systems because they're working on the terminal and I can sort of fit it in there. Um, pushing it to fundies or like a first time programmer, you know, might be a little bit more difficult. I imagine, um, you know, maybe uh, th that's something I'd love to sort of experiment with. Um, and I'll have to look at what courses like CS50 and those ones are doing, um, you know, for the first time programmers. Uh, but this still I, seems like something. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. Cool. Uh, yes. <laughs> so I did a, a PDP here, and that does get uh, for students. Programming who are, development. It, it hardly matters. Just the <laughs> intro uh, um, programming course for the master's students uh, that until now has been taught in Racket, but I, when I taught it, it was taught in Racket. Um, and the main pro problem with uh, using uh, Git uh, there was um, students confused about the difference between like local commits versus pushing to a repo. Mm -hmm. And so we would have students who like had sort of finished stuff on their machine, but whatever was, yeah, it, it didn't get sort of actually submitted. And that's mm -hmm. kind of a non-obvious thing, I guess, for a sort of a uh, beginner. Um, um, like professors, I constantly do a commit and forget to do the second, like I'll stage it and forget to do the final commit or anything that I'm showing with other props. And like, where's, where's the stuff you said you did two days ago? I'm like, oh yes, I forgot to do the final push commit, whatever the heck the terminology is going to be for whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and since that experience, I have avoided uh, Git for programming courses, but uh, I'm, you know, uh, willing to hear sort of like <laughs> tools to sort of make that kind of thing uh, not be yeah. a problem. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the other thing that uh, is, is you specifically mentioned the CS50, and so I, I keenly remember that actually uh, version control was taught uh, when I chose CS50 at that point. Okay. 
good to know. Yeah, I mean, I think that the magic is in like getting people to understand the number four, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, and the uh, other, say, course source control thing. Basically, you only have to worry about getting the three, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and 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 four um, is an important thing to learn for multiple reasons. One is that um, there's kind of because yes, that's how you make yourself visible to your professors. But if you're working on a big coding project with multiple people, that's how the rest of the world can see what you've done. Right. So I mean, so I think at some level, um, you know, gets influence in the larger kind of either open source or commercial world. It's kind of like you know one step. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to have your students say be able to be sort of you know viable in that world, it's important for them to understand at an early part in a coding career, like how the major source control systems work. So even though it's tough, I think, and it's hard, I think, for them to grok it, the earlier they grok it, kind of the better they'll be. Because basically, they'll understand kind of the difference between local and remote. They'll understand the difference between I can work disconnected with no wireless at all, and my stuff can, will eventually, I can make it, I can publish it when I reconnect to the world, you know. Um, and this doesn't even about branching, which is another important thing. Right. But I think getting, understanding how to do four, is is kind of, kind of, kind of almost like kind of a basic skill in sort of large computing projects today. Yeah, and for the most part, uh, students in systems. Uh, so, so I think maybe systems is maybe a natural first place to introduce this. Uh, yeah, intro class probably more hairballs to deal with. Uh, but yeah, we can sort of motivate it nicely with the real world examples. Um, sort of, hey, if you mess up, you can always like reverse some of these things. Uh, for the most part, I'm just teaching them how to. Uh, do the git add, git commit, and git push. And I'm constantly saying, you know, remember, git add, uh, commit, push. I sort of put those three if they remember those. Um, then it becomes a habit. By now, we're in week four or so, or five, sorry. <laughs> uh, and I'm not having too many students or any like saying, hey, my git's messed up. Uh, but lab one uh, is sort of dedicated 15 minutes in my systems class of, hey, here's a little GitHub tutorial do this. Um, so far, so good. Uh, but yeah, hearing the sort of like uh, PDP example, I tend to sort of say, yeah, maybe uh, first programming class is. Uh, did, did you use the command line or a, um, uh, GUI? All on command line. Yep. But so that might be a difference because uh, our students used a GUI, and I kind of think it was then more confusing as to sort of like, sure, which might yeah. be book. Yeah, I just think their systems people are already suffering with assembly, let alone. I know, yeah, that's this week. <laughs> um, okay, so this is the Git stuff, um, you know. Uh, and yeah, so I should say this sort of like positive feedback from, this is coming from students on systems, maybe sophomore level, typically junior. They've been on co-op, they've seen it um, or, or heard, maybe even used it before. Um, so, so the target here is kind of clear. Uh, okay, so that's sort of Git. Um, you know, there's lots of these handy cheat sheets and stuff, so I always hand these out with students as well, just to keep things straight. Um, okay, so then GitHub, just uh, you know, one slide on terminology, because I you know, constantly interchange these, but GitHub is the host for Git repositories, right, for an uh, online system. Uh, there's a bunch that exist, things like GitLab, Bitbucket, etc. Um, we're talking about sort of GitHub's uh, service here. Okay, so sort of on to the good stuff. Uh, GitHub Classroom, uh, the tool that's sort of built on GitHub to help us as uh, teachers, um, you know, sort of delivering assignments and things uh, to our students. So I want to give us sort of my nine steps or my walkthrough of just what this tool is doing. Uh, and just some best practices uh, from my end. Okay. So the quick overview, um, this is what GitHub Classroom looks like when you log in. It's a pretty clean interface. Uh, I've got my courses here that I've taught. They're called my classrooms. Uh, and I'm using it for two of my courses right now. Um, and I'm sort of the one sole uh, leader of these courses. Um, if you wanted to use this with another faculty member, that is an option. Um, me and Alden are teaching systems right now. We had talked about this. Um, in the future, you might be able to sync up, and that's even better. Uh, so step one, you know, the setup and sort of the 
bare basics. You, know, you need a GitHub account, uh, and then you can sign into classroom.github.com, uh, create a new classroom. Uh, in GitHub, it's a new uh, organization is what you create. Um, so create a new classroom, then step two will say, hey, make a new uh, GitHub organization. Okay. Uh, after Mike, could you just clarify, so yep. is GitHub Classroom some, uh, a specific tool for instructors that the GitHub organization created? Are uh, they creating customization specifically for universities? This is specifically for teachers, yeah. Okay. Uh, high school level, universities. So you didn't create this? Why yes, I didn't do this. So why the hell is it called an organization then? It's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. So classroom and organization are interviews interchangeably here? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, essentially. Um, so, so my repository, which I call like, Mike's, you know, systems class, that's a GitHub organization, I guess. So, you know, github.com slash Mike's classroom or whatever. Um, and they call that an organization, um, which has privileges to use this tool. Um, is maybe the way to say it. Um, so once you've done this step, uh, which is all sort of, you know, here's the steps I paraphrase uh, from this documentation. They'll ask you to fill out a GitHub a little form to sort of confirm, hey, I am a teacher. Um, I think in the past what this is for means is you need your uh, NEU uh, email address, uh, maybe a scan of your Husky ID, uh, and that's all I've ever remembered sending to them. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I did this most recently. I'm trying to remember how I, um, yeah. um, the organization classroom thing is confusing. Right? Um, yeah. That much I over there. Um, <laughs> I just think you just needed to have a university matched um, email address. Might have I don't think been anything past that. Lighter it takes them some time. It, like it, you know, they it's they come back as as quick as you know three hours, and sometimes it took the entire weekend, right? So because yeah. I got to get it wrong the first time, wedging myself and started over again on the Friday, and the 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 acknowledgement that I had access to my services didn't happen until like late Sunday. So, you know, so, 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 so as a word of warning is that, you know, don't do this like hours before, you're ex before you have to use it. <laughs> you know, give yourself some time. Yeah. Typically they are quick. Uh, yeah. The same business day. They recommend, you know, five days or whatever, yeah. uh, just to make sure they can set things up. Um, but the key is, once they've done this, is that GitHub's granting you and for your students uh, free private repositories. Uh, so private, again, is key. Um, students are putting code somewhere. I want to make sure that's you know, only the students see it, and it's not open to the world, right? We don't want other, uh, you know, non-students looking in, et cetera. Okay, so we've sort of set up uh, GitHub in a sense, uh, and now we want to uh, manage the classroom. So sort of, you know, what does the administration uh, look like? Okay, so, uh, from this management of classroom, there's really uh, one key thing to do. Um, and it's going to provide you a little interface. And this is where you invite in who the other teachers are, your TAs, who else is going to help administer things. Um, so you can give them you know, your teaching assistants or other instructors this link uh, or this uh, URL to click on. Um, and then they as well can see the student repositories. Uh, you can give different level permissions to them. So students can only, you know, see other people's code, um, or you can give them the sort of full admin privileges. Um, you know, I found this is very helpful to have TAs have this access so they can just sort of debug, you know, if someone on Piazza says, hey, I'm struggling with Lab 2, and say, have you pushed your code? And then they just kind of look online at Lab 2. Um, very simple. Okay. So they've created our classroom, uh, our TAs, other instructors, everyone has access. Uh, now we need to actually create an assignment uh, to deliver. So again, there's a handy button here for new assignment. So I click on that, and then I'm given two choices for when I want to create an assignment. <coughs> uh, it can either be individual assignments, so students will be working in their own repo that no one can see, their own uh, code base. Uh, or they can create a group assignment. Uh, in this case, you know, students will form teams and they'll all have access to one uh, private repository. Um, when you're creating teams, there's also a tool so you can cap uh, a team of you know, four students or whatever, you can set the maximum. So that's handy. 
and, and once students click on this uh, link here, they'll see like a list of teams that have been created. Um, so uh, what I've done, I'll show an example uh, live once I stop uh, recording uh, of what it sort of looks like. Uh, but I have students in a spreadsheet that says, hey, student A and B, you're in team one. So they'll have you know, a repository for team one. And I'll show what that looks like in a little bit to get a visual. Okay, so you've created an assignment, you've decided is it an individual one or a team one, uh, and then you're gonna fill out a form. Okay, so the assignment name. Uh, the next key thing is, you know, is this assignment visible, public, or private? Uh, always private, right? Again, we don't want anyone peeking in uh, to see things. Uh, and then you can add starter code from, you know, your GitHub repository. Uh, so, you know, I have some other GitHub that I've created and I want to, you know, put in the starter code if students need starter code or read me, etc. Uh, so here's an example uh, of like the skeletons I like to provide. So this is the starter code for, you know, assignment one that we're creating. Uh, I always put in a read me. It's in a markdown format, so this is what it looks like. It's easy to write and presentable. Um, I also like to do some data collection in my README so students can sort of edit this as they want in the assignments. And since I'm providing all the files, uh, I might give them a blank file, you know, myscript.sh, whatever it is, that's named exactly how I want it, uh, in the proper case, proper extensions, um, so it makes things easy for like unit testing. Okay, I can provide those subs. Of course, students can add their own, but this solves some headaches for me. Okay, questions so far if I pause? All right, moving along. Okay, so I've created the assignment. Uh, how do students get the assignment now? Okay, so this is you know, the assignments I've created. I've just created one I call it the mono repo because it's gonna be a big assignment uh, for individuals. Uh, and we'll notice over here on the right, there's this copy invitation link, uh, and there's a URL here. So, uh, when students want to do this assignment, you simply pass on this URL. So you could post this on your website, you could send it to them you know, through Blackboard on email, uh, whatever sort of mechanism you have um, for students to get this URL. Uh, when they click on it, I'll get an email that says, you know, student A, student B has accepted your assignment. That way I know or have an idea of, you know, students are, you know, at least starting on this. Uh, if I see some stranger, somehow this link gets shared, um, I'll also get an email about that and then I can delete it right away. Um, say, hey, what are you doing, stranger? Why are you doing extra homework? <laughs> um, so, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then usually I'll, you know, hide these after the term too, because I don't want people sort of looking ahead and seeing like, you know, getting access to uh, these assignments ahead of time. All right, so I try to try to avoid that. Uh, in every semester, I do have students who have like signed up for my class around November, and they're like, "Oh, what did Professor Shaw, you know, teach last uh, term?" And I'll try to take a peek, and I delete it, and I say, "No, yeah." Is there a time to release feature? Uh, there is. Yep. There's a time, uh, or there's at least a uh, there's a deadline on assignments, so I can lock things down. Uh, time release feature, I I don't know, actually, if that exists. Uh, that would be really nice. Um, hmm. Okay. So I've released the assignment. Students are sort of accepting, you know, clicking on the URL to see if they're doing anything. Uh, this is sort of what it looks like on the uh, web interface. So there'll be the student's name sort of on this side, and then you know I can view their repository and just sort of click in. Uh, also, you know, under the student names, it'll show how many commits they've made from the online repository. Uh, so this is something I can do a quick sanity check and say, oh, you know, such and such, they're you know working hard, you know, whatever a commit means for <laughs> for in progress. Um, at least if it's not you know zero, that's what I want to see. If I see zero, then you know, ping that student. Um, you know, if you have a hundred students, you can think about automating this um, sort of process. Send them a reminder that says, "Hey, you haven't uh, started." Um, also, they just be thinking of it in terms of uh, 
I'm going to work on the assignment and I'm not going to submit anything until it's done. And so they just think that they're not supposed to like commit as they go. Yeah, so, so I do provide a little bit of like, hey, there's no, uh, like, uh, lab one, commit early and often. There's no, like, penalty for doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, on occasion, I will see students sort of forgetting to, you know, commit anything. Um, I just wonder if it's something about, like, a cultural misconception. Like, yeah. It's like you should be saving and committing yeah. in a real world environment that maybe they're just not used to doing. Yeah, because I think an important note is, and I always tell students, hey, I'll grade your last commit before the deadline. Um, I think stuff like that's helpful to them to commit early and often. I don't know if you. Uh, yeah, I nice. encourage them. You know, I think uh, right after the get, maybe the class after the sort of um, they actually have an assignment. I you know I kind of remind them that, that one that, that sort of committing up to so, you know forcing pushing back your work up to GitHub so it's visible um, is helpful for both you know at must be in the TAs to kind of assess the work in a way that it won't be actually officially graded until like the last commit for the deadline. Mm -hmm. But also just getting into the practice of committing often actually helps them do their work. Because if they do something wrong, it's easy to reverse a small commit or a series of small commits than one huge Mondo commit that has tons of diffs in it. Right. So getting them in the practice of like making a little change, commit, you know, annotating it is better than doing three days work and committing it and then trying to figure out what's broken. Right. So you know and so yeah so the and it actually is, sometimes you know, this other version is, has a little, it's, it's a little graphic, yep. which will show you kind of the, the rate of sort of commits that have been pushed back. And so that only is committing often sort of a thing you have, that I try to encourage, also to push their work up to get up, yeah. because that way the TAs can want to go to office hours, they don't have to huddle over one person's laptop, right? The TA can look at it, they can look at it, you know, things like that. Yeah, I have seen, you know, in the case of when I've used this for a final project where, you know, there's there's sort of this graph of like how many commits are they making? It's sort of flat all the right. way and then just one spike for exactly one. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I guess I don't know, do they just like do it the night before or, you know, like these kind of things. But um, yeah, I try to enforce that habit. Um, so, so I think that brings us, that's a nice lead into uh, sort of number seven, which is sort of the automation. Uh, you can think about since you're in this GitHub framework, uh, you have this whole sort of GitHub API you can use. So you can do things like, hey, give me all the student repositories, see how many commits there were, um, you know, how often there. I'm not doing anything crazy with this yet, uh, but I'm. This is something I'm thinking about. You know, how can I do something that you know, gives me <coughs> some information about this? Yeah. Can you run tests on it? Uh, yep. Yeah. So, so since this is all in the GitHub environment, um, GitHub has these Git hooks, um, and you can set up a hook. This is something I'm playing around with. Uh, for as soon as they commit something, just run a bunch of unit tests. Um, so, if you want to give like instant feedback, I know that's something. So that would be a reason to want to commit. Crypto make they were trying to right keep seeing if they're passing tests. Um, so, so that's something I'm working on uh, building. Um, and I think that would really enforce that concept, as you said. Because uh, I know I've heard feedback from students uh, who use Bottlenose, which is another sort of system here folks haven't heard about, with uh, NatTuck and Ben Learner for fundies. Um, they really like these like tests and feedback of some sort, so that can be baked in here, and it will eventually uh, in my setup. Yeah. Um, and uh, what I tend to use uh, is, is HackerRank. Um, oh, yeah. Which is all about the tests and yep. passing the tests, um, but it doesn't enforce um, version control. So if I could easily have kind of both things, then I would definitely switch over to uh, GitHub mm -hmm. Classroom. Awesome. Yeah. Um, oh, so are you using Bottlenose with uh, HackerRank then, or or some other tool? No. Uh, oh. So uh, my, to my knowledge, Ben doesn't share Bottlenose except within a very limited uh, set of courses. Uh, but just HackerRank alone uh, is all about like um, make the desired input-output mappings mm -hmm. and submit those as text files to the site. Mm -hmm. um, students upload their code. Uh, it runs against all of them. You can make the tests private or public. I can make them all public just so they can kind of see what it is that mm -hmm. they are doing incorrectly. Yep. Uh, and then it's just sort of drastically reduces the um, number of errors that we see kind of coming in because you know all of the stupid stuff is sort of uh, weaved out. Right. And, and to me, that, that would be like more more valuable than version control, but if I can have both, then, then absolutely I want both. Got it. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, yeah, because my, my plan is uh, for systems to release like some set of, like here's two or three of the tests, see if you can at least you know pass that many. Um, and then I'll have sort of my own, but uh, as you said, I think that'll yeah give rid of a lot of the headaches for the students and maybe boost their confidence. Um, okay, so on the automation end, uh, I'll show you at least one thing I, I do do, which is sort of uh, pooling repositories, right? So you can write a little Python script. Um, you know, I'm just scrapbooking what I'm doing here. Git cloning, you know, my name, my password, the GitHub.com, uh, whatever the course is. This is my organization, my classroom. And then, you know, I am iterating through some list uh, of students' uh, GitHub names here. Okay, so something like that's one way to pull in all the repositories. Um, so this is what I'm trying to grade uh, and look at all the student stuff. So I'm pulling them all in locally on my machine and then running tests uh, on each directory here. Um, let's see, another way to do this sort of with the GitHub API, you know, this is my function here, gets all student repos, uh, little thing with a curl for my username and then accessing the GitHub API. So this is you know, api.github.com and there's uh, the specific request I'm doing is repos uh, and give me you know, up to 200 of them. Uh, and then I essentially get a giant JSON file that has you know, students' repositories, where the URL is, how many commits there are, this kind of information. Okay, so this is like one uh, example. Uh, again, and my goal is to just get all the code on my machine and then grade as I normally would. Okay. Uh, and then on that one, you know, okay, you know, <laughs> you know, maybe scripts is a mess or whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, and you don't want to do that. My infrastructure right now is a Python script that's about 200 lines, so it's it's pretty manageable. Um, and I've been working you know, closely with Alden. We've slowly made incremental improvements. Maybe that's something we can share with folks. Again, maybe you know, sharing the 200 line special script isn't like ideal. Um, <laughs> um, you know, sort of building on that framework. Uh, but there are other folks looking at this, and there was a timely, at least what I noticed, um, addition to the system of just a nice button here that says download all the repositories. Um, so this is something new as far as I know, as of the last week or, you know, when I refreshed the page while I was writing this uh, slideshow. Um, so this will bring up a tool called Classroom Assistant that sort of just walks you through, put your URL in your classroom, log into GitHub, uh, and then you can just hit download everything. Um, and that seems also fine. Okay, so I've got everything. I'm running my tests, uh, you know, and I'm trying to give students feedback uh, in some way, or your, or your teaching assistants are doing this. Uh, again, what's nice is everything in GitHub is sort of time stamped, um, so you know if something's late or not. Um, running scripts against every uh, submission. Uh, and then I'll have my TAs do some, you know, pass for code style and these sort of things. Because um, they have it all. And they can look at it either locally if they've used that classroom tool or the script, uh, or, you know, in their ID. Uh, feedback for now uh, that I give, though, is still on our beloved uh, Blackboard. Because uh, I don't know uh, about putting grades and stuff on github.com. Um, as far as I know, that's a no-no, so, <laughs> um, you know, so just a note on that. But if you did, the repos are private. They right? are private, so yep. It would be just for the students. Just, just for the students, yeah. Like, so, yeah. So I'm being cautious. They're um, theoretically private, right? Yeah. They're yeah. not to the world, but exactly. they might have that. Yeah. Or, or yeah, right. place has access to yeah. This, this falls in that. Yeah, this <laughs> 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 exactly, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so you know, so far this has been fine. Students, uh, I don't, I don't know if they'd, have, they'd probably want to see it just in GitHub uh, eventually. So I don't know. We'll see what the clearance is uh, on that. Yeah. Just to be clear on the testing, like the solution for testing is pull everything with the script and test with the script. Yep. Okay. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So you can't test on the server at all. Uh, so I can't just like, so there's like uh, Jenkins integrations of these kind of tools I can hook up and these good uh, GitHub hooks that I've been talking about. So every time a student commits, test runs, uh, that test needs to be in their repository so they can see what the test is, okay. in a sense. Um, 
So, so those are like two, you could like automate those. Uh, you could automate everything. Um, so, so like, you've got hooks, yep. um, but still the hooks will execute some code that you wrote and then execute some more code that you wrote. Right. Which is like doable, but like not great. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and that can't be hidden from the student. Uh, as a, if I'm doing it through the hooks, the way I've set it up, uh, not hidden. So that's where I would maybe give them a few unit tests or something, you know, in some C code for systems, um, and that's okay. Uh, if I do something with like Jenkins, um, I think uh, then I can hide everything. Uh, I need to look a little bit more at these sort of integration systems. I can have some instance of a Jenkins, you know, server running and, and testing all these repositories in the back. Um, again, that's something more heavyweight I haven't played around with. Uh, and yeah. just one other thing, because maybe, uh, maybe I'm naive. Are we language, we're language specific when it comes to all these testing, and also presumably language specific when it comes to GitHub, or no, is it I just keep an binary file? Well, for GitHub, it doesn't matter if you're using C, Python, Racket, whatever. Other than unit testing can. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so anything you could normally put in GitHub, we're still good to go. Um, yeah, great questions. Uh, so that brings us to uh, sort of number nine. Uh, so we've, we've sort of walked through one assignment, uh, graded it, given some feedback in some way. Uh, now I want to add something else as the semester goes on. And there's sort of two choices to be made. Uh, either create a new assignment, like we did, have students on that URL. Um, and I think that works fine, you know, especially if some assignments are done in teams, some are individually, and you want to sort of toggle things. Um, what I've been doing for uh, systems, since a lot of it's uh, individual on the assignment end, is I just have this giant uh, monolithic repo, so just one big repo, uh, right? So then I push a new directory into that repo, because I've already got everything. Remember, we had that script that downloads everything, and I just push a new directory there. Uh, and then students get practice doing get pool to get all the updates. And there's no merge conflicts because it's a separate directory, so that avoids some headaches. Um, how do you reuse it from semester to semester? How do I uh, reuse it? Like, so you, you don't want them to get all the assignments in advance. Right. Um, so for now, I've been okay because assignments change. Um, so even if you have like a buddy who uh, has their mono repo and sort of pass it on. I've escaped that, so that uh, I can do that. I can delete everything um, from the classroom. And just, and then just repush it. And then just repush it. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I, I can clear out their whole repository, their whole history. Uh, right. Just do a sort of git reset um, on everything. Uh, and that's the that's the cleanest, probably best thing to do. Um, um, and I do archive, so, so as I'm pulling these things in, right, I'm doing this on CCS, so I still have the record of like all the students, like code or something, or an old assignment I used, uh, which is nice. Or if someone did something clever or whatever and I want to save it, I have that. Um, okay, let's see. So, so that's sort of, you know, the, the nine steps, and sort of in summary, you know, I think GitHub Classroom is a potentially powerful tool. Talked about a few use cases, and then thinking about where to apply it, at what level of students. Uh, useful resources I've seen. Uh, GitHub is pushing this, so they have some good uh, YouTube videos. Uh, and there were some nice ones from uh, Sig C just on how other people have their sort of workflow. Uh, this was like the hour long video I watched uh, last year when I was just starting that kind of gave me a few ideas on how to use Classroom. Um, so, with that, I'm going to pause the recording and then I can show you what it actually looks like. Uh, and then we can discuss or whatever.